Welcome back. Welcome back. If you are returning for floss tube number five, it is Friday, June 14th, and I am Annie. I am the Joy Filled Stitcher here on YouTube as well as on Instagram. And I'm so excited to share with you what I worked on this week. Maybe a little life update, some knitting update, some book update. And yes, I said knitting. And of course, lots and lots of talk of cross stitch. So I hope everybody's had a great week. Um, I came to you last Friday and I, if you watch that video, you will know that I was dealing with um, a rather terrible stomach virus. It was like a 36 hour virus. So thankfully, um, I kind of turned a corner on that on Friday enough to get a video up, but it was a shorter one. I'm going to try to keep with the shorter format. I'm actually going to move this a little closer. I feel like I'm really far away. There we go. So again, thank you so much for watching and commenting on, on my previous videos as well as my whip parade. I have just enjoyed kind of getting that chit chat back and forth going and hearing your thoughts on the projects that I'm working on, answering your questions if you have any, and it really has meant so much to me. And I have to say, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking my videos. And if you're new here, welcome. Um, a little bit about myself, kind of since we're at number five, that's kind of a, a milestone, I guess. I thought maybe we'd only have one, but now we have, this is going to be video number five. Um, my name is Annie. I am an elementary school teacher, so I am off for this summer as of a couple of weeks ago. And I love all things crafty, and I enjoy cross-stitching. I've been cross-stitching for a number of years, over 20. And that's not my only craft. And so I am planning to share something today with you that is something I'm bringing back out that is a hobby I had years ago. And I'm dabbling in it as well. I dabble in lots of things, but let's put it this way. Cross stitch is the one that always is my go-to. So I actually made myself some show notes on my phone. Um, and I'm going to be including um, a link to kind of a little super simple blog where I can post pictures and links and descriptions. And, you know, I've seen some of the floss tubers that I watch really do that. Nicole's needlework is one of them. And I love that I can go and click on her link, takes me to her blog, and I can see all the details of all the projects she talked about, her knitting she talked about. And so I'm going to put forth a little bit of effort and to share the things that I chat about. Not necessarily everything, because some weeks it's a lot, but for the most part, I'm going to share quite a bit. So first things first, this is a new kind of segment is a little bit of Q and a. So I'm going to pull up, um, on my last video, I had, um, a comment and I thought, you know what? Somebody else might just might want to know the answer to this. So let me pull up. No, I don't want to actually watch my video. <laughs> Just kidding. So let's see. Here we go. And it's going to probably try to play my video too. Okay, so the person who commented that I wanted to share with is Barb. And uh, Barb, I've already kind of briefly replied to you and said, hey, check out my show notes because I'm going to detail this more. But she said, I always enjoy your projects. Thank you, Barb. I am so happy to share and that people are enjoying them. And it says, please tell me where you get the beautiful Ada colors. I am a total Ada stitcher and have trouble getting the many color choices. So I have um, some favorites, some favorite places that I um, purchase my Ada cloth from. So first, kind of the one where a lot of my current projects are kitted on is um, from a Facebook group or a, a person who sells Misty is her name. And she is the proprietor of Mystic Hand Dyed Fabrics. And she sells through her Facebook group. And she does Sunday sales. And so you go on on 
Sunday and it's usually around 11 o'clock Central Standard Time, my time. And she posts the things she's dyed over the course of that week. Um, and she usually wrote, kind of lets you know throughout the week what the theme, so to speak, is going to be. So sometimes one week she did a lot of neutrals. Uh, one week, this past week, she did a lot of like rainbow pride fabric and uh, jewel tones. She called them gems. So real bright, saturated on opalescent fabric. And so I, I actually have one to share of that. She also runs a monthly subscription that you can get. And um, she invoices a little bit before the first. It ships just after the first. And you can choose what you get. I choose, ha, I participate in the any ADA. So it means I could get a 14, 16, 18 count. I believe I could also have gotten a 20 or 22. I'm not 100% sure of that. And it can either be opalescent or not. And so I don't, I like that because not only am I surprised by what the color is, because it is a surprise each month, but I'm also surprised by what I get. Um, and so I add to all the counts in my stash, which is fantastic. And then I also end up with some opalescent and some regular. So she's one that I purchase a significant amount of my fabric from. And my stash is rather exorbitant. And I am I think I might do kind of a, a stash share of kind of some of the cuts of fabric that I have sitting in my stash um, at some point this summer. And then the other one that I've been that I've purchased from in the past, and um, I don't necessarily purchase his that he has listed that are custom. I will purchase from his Little Orphans on his website, and then I also do his monthly subscription, and that is Ships Manor. Um, Eric is the proprietor of Ships Manor, and he does beautiful fabrics. His are very vibrant, um, and I do his Prim subscription. Um, he kind of has a prim and then like a bright, real variegated. Um, and I, I like the prim because um, I get my brights from Misty. And then uh, some of the ones that I get from his orphans are very bright. Um, then also I have purchased Ada in bright colors from Picture This Plus, And I've gotten them from 123 Stitch for Picture This Plus. Also at my local LNS, they had some Picture This Plus um right at the first, oh, right when market was, they had some of the new picture of this plus. The other one that I have purchased from, and I am obsessed with her quality, and I will be buying more, is um, Leslie and Under the Sea Fabrics. I love her things. Um, I did some of her mystery Stitcher's Eights and was over the moon about what I got from her, and those were mysteries. And I got two opalescent and two non-opalescent, two just regular. So that's kind of the long and the short of it. I will link all of those in my in the description. And um, I actually have started to dabble a little bit in my own dyeing, um, just with Rit Dye and doing, I actually followed um, Jennifer Upton's little tutorial she did on her YouTube and I have been really pleased with the results that I have gotten from that and so that's kind of helped to build my stash a little bit. So that's the Q&A for today so let's talk a little bit about whips and I'm going to pause for just a second and I will be right back. So you know how I said we were talking about whips? I forgot that I have a finish and so we're going to talk about a finish first and I'm really excited about this finish. So um, a couple weeks back, I had mentioned how my grandmother had passed away in September, last September, and I was doing a piece in memory of her and just to have, because I wanted something to remind me of her. And so one thing about Mimi, that was what I called her, she was my Mimi, was that she would, without fail, whenever we spoke in person, on the phone, she would say, hello, beautiful. Hello, beautiful. How's my Annie today? How's my how's my beautiful girl? How's my beautiful granddaughter? And without fail, she has been one person in my life who has always seen the beauty in me. And so when she passed, I lost a significant amount of the joy. Um, you know, I read something not too long ago that there's a difference between joy and happiness. And happiness is... is outwardly controlled joyfulness is inwardly controlled 
and joy is something that just exists in you from the daily basis and but I lost some of that my joy faded I wouldn't say I lost it it faded I was having less joy in my heart joy in my soul um, losing somebody very suddenly who's very close to you is very hard um, I know everybody understands that um, and losing Mimi was no different than that and so I really wanted something in my in my space in my personal space at home that could remind me of her and remind remind me how beautiful she always believed I was even when I didn't believe it um, of myself and so I stay I I uh, made a font of he hello beautiful um, and then I went and did my old school graph paper and then I stitched fiddled it and then I put it online and so I stitched this on a 16 count picture this plus this is in and I'm not gonna remember the colorway this is a light blue with a kind of a gray it's cheap leaning a little more gray and then it's stitched completely in gentle arts cherry wine and so just a really pretty garnet red and I'm hopeful that maybe my focus will do a bit better this today so anyway this is a finish I am going to do a hoop hoop finish on this um, I am debating on purchasing a hoop that has a crocheted edge but this needs a six inch hoop and the place I am looking does not currently have a color that I would really want for this um, in stock and so I'm going to wait and see if one pops up. So that's my finish. Yay! And also speaking of finishes, I went ahead and this week spent some time um, going ahead and lacing uh, strawberries and stripes to get it ready for its final finish. Um, and so I hope to have that. I may... I may have to share a picture because I believe it has to be shipped out by the 20th, which is before I would record another video to show it in person. I may do a midweek like check-in and be like, hey, I got to show off this finish. I'm really excited about what this one's going to look like. It is most, my most elaborate finish to date. And can we just talk about the fact that I finally have things on my bulletin board back here? It's not just a plain blank space. So I found this print on Etsy and it says, Be a light for all to see, Matthew 516. And that is actually our verse. Um, I am over student council at my school and this is our guiding verse this next year. I also have a cute card my daughter made me that says Mama in flowers. And then a letter she wrote me and then back here is a painting she did for me. And so... I'm loving all my cutesy things back in my inspiration. What makes me happy and brings me joy. So, let's see. So, when we last spoke on Friday, I was working through a Magical Stitches extra credit. And so this was for the task of something you would find in a maze. So we are working through the Goblet of Fire right now. So it's uh, geared towards kind of some of those triwizard tasks. Obviously, the maze, maze played a big piece in the, the last task of the triwizard tournament. And so I am do I chose to use, this was a new start last week. This is by Ink Circles, and this is, was a free um, pattern off of her, off the website. And this is Ink Spot number seven in, and it's called Four in the Bush. And I am doing this on a 14 count silk weaver. And this is one I found on a seller on eBay. And I am stitching this all in um, a hand dyed by, by Rolanda variegated that has that goes from the dark, rich burgundy to kind of the green and the gold and meanders its way through. So this is a little over 500 stitches in this. This is a good start and I'm loving it. This is very quick to stitch. Um, I'm really into kind of this geometric, and so I'm loving it. And let me show you the um, the fiber real quick. Um, so this is what it looks like. Let me show you on here so you can see. So it kind of goes from dark 
through this gold into green and then in between. I, one of my favorite color changes on this is where it goes from the burgundy to the green. It has this really cool murky grayish look to it. This is actually a good view of what it, what all the colors look like. I went ahead and bobbinated it because Rolanda's come as one continuous. So I love that and I love how that's stitching up. It's very quick um, and I love that I found it. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about this one. It is in a just a flannelly pouch that I found this fabric at Joann's. I could not resist. Love it. Funky. Awesome. So then homework got released on Saturday night late and I was left with a conundrum. So this week had a lot to do with the, it was titled The Black Lake. And so the house elf stole our favorite project, the thing that we were desperate to work on, and went and put a spell on it, put a th something on it, and went and buried it at the bottom of the lake. And in order to save our project from the lake, we had to stitch a thousand stitches. Or you could choose to stitch any project and put in 300 stitches. Well, I don't do penalty unless I just absolutely want to. I like, I like the kind of complexity. So my conundrum was, I'm loving a lot of my projects right now. And so it was a matter of what did I really want to stitch on? What was not slotted for an extra credit task coming up, which I'm kind of almost out of those, or what have I not already marked in my plan, in my um, iPad for a year long task? Because I tend to go in and I highlight my stitches um, in there. So I chose, um, Oh, and you know what? I didn't show the pattern for the ink circles. So this is four in the bush. I am only stitching the black part or the dark gray part. The colors is an option that you could stitch. I am choosing to stitch it all in the colorway. So for this, I went ahead and chose to do um, Al Forest Embroidery's Emerald City Sal. And the reason why I did this is I'm a little bit behind. Um, I... Up through last week, I was about halfway through, I think it's Taddy Poo. Uh, I swore I was going to know what, what her name is. And then I still had all of this to do. Plus, there's two more releases up above. Um, so, I'm very excited to report that I now have part one complete. Excuse me. Part two complete. And I have started on part three, which part three is exciting because it has the Tin Man and the Cowardly Lion. So I'm going to kind of fold this in half so I can show you. This is part one, which I had already completed. So here is part, I'm trying to hide my excitement up here, part two. So I did did the, um, the witch and I used, uh, I don't know if it's going to show, but I used DMC Etoile, Etoile. Uh, thread to do the silver parts of her dress as well as her hair. I did the scarecrow, this flower, and the rest of the corn stalks and the fence. And then this is my favorite. You can kind of see I stitched the Tin Man in two colors of the DMC H12. So a light and a darker gray. And I am loving. You can kind of I get a glimmer of him. And I'm loving him. So very excited and I will be progressing along on that. I am not going to meet, I'm being perfectly honest, I'm not going to meet the deadline of the 23rd to have four parts complete. It, it just isn't gonna happen. So, and this is in a Made by Mama Joan bag, a Kelly Creates collab, and I'm gonna pause. So what happens when you realize your dinner is on the way? <laughs> And it's arriving earlier than expected as you pause your video so you can make sure that you get the door before the doorbell rings and the dog tries to run out. So, I was sharing about some of the things I worked on this week. So, I finished the um, thousand stitches on, let me pull up my notes so I can remind myself. That took me a little bit longer than I'd like for it to take me. Um, that took me all the way through Thursday. Um, but that also was a little bit because on Monday I had a doctor's appointment 
and I didn't want to take that with me so I ended up taking Hello Beautiful and then once I realized how close I was to a finish I finished that first and so I really only got about an hour in on Emerald City Style before I was falling asleep and that's when the frog comes is when I get tired and so I took to kind of a break on Monday from that stitched on that on Tuesday a little bit Wednesday a little bit Thursday I finished that in the morning with about 80 some odd stitches and then I Thursday was also when I laced strawberries and stripes and then I had a new start I started um, Prairie School or Tree Farm um, Christmas tree farm or tree farm? I'm not sure. So this is the mock-up that you can find when you go and look. So it's got these cute houses, trees, and Prairie Schooler loves the reds and the greens for Christmas. I love red and green for Christmas too, but I like using all my fun flosses. So I did a complete color conversion on this. A complete color conversion. So I went through, and this is my ring of ring of colors, I shall say. And so I use these cable ties to hold my um, floss away bags. And so this project now has an exceptional number of things, um, of colors. So the first things first, I went through and I looked at my, looked at the called for, and there's very, there's very few. And I looked at what the symbols were and then I went and created in my numbers application I use numbers which is like Excel for Mac and I listed out okay what was that symbol used for it was used for um, so for instance the square is used for the roof hmm the sleigh the sign there's a couple of different things so I went through and I was like well you know I want some variation so I'm using this Victorian motto for the roof for that color. This is not the roof though. The roof is going to be Victorian motto uh, multi shaded gray. Then I've got some Weeks Die Work Battleship. So I've got some different things that are going to be going in for that. So then L is another big symbol, and that's all the houses. But then there's other things that are also L because L is the red. And there's only, I think there's only two reds, or maybe only one red in the whole thing. I can't play like that. So, um, I am using Weeks Dye Works Garnet, and that's mainly for Santa's suit. And maybe, I think this is also for the red truck. I'm using, this is a mystery grab bag from Color and Cotton, which is kind of a navy blue. That's going to be for the car. And then, I don't remember what this is for. I think it might be for the sign or something. But this is another mystery weeks, uh, mystery color and cotton. Kind of that rusty color. So those are my other items of L. Now for the houses. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 houses. So each house is a different color. So I've got, this is uh, Midnight Ocean by Victoria Motto. This is Summer Desert by, Victor by Victoria Motto. This, are you catching a theme? This is Aqua Lace Trim by Victoria Motto. Move that, that out of the way. Then I've got um, Antique Pumpkin Glow. This is also a Victoria Motto. This is one I got um, from a seller on eBay who was de-stashing. This is Rose Lavender Mosaic, and this one I'm obsessed with. And in fact, when I show you, this is the first house I stitched because I was like, oh, I love it. Can't wait. This is Dollhouse by Victoria Motto. This is approximately $8.93 DMC, so like a real bright pink. Then we've got this Schitt's Manor Limited Edition I got in a grab bag. We've got Weeks Dye Works Glacial Mist. This was, I think, one I got in... Um, Gulf Coast Stitches Floss Club. And then we've got a limited edition, another one from uh, Ships Manor that was in a grab bag. Loving it. It's making it fun to stitch with all these fun colors. So then G was another symbol. And it's used on the road and some other things. Well, this is G and the single dot. So the windows are going to be out of this uh, color and cotton. Um... This is another one that's going to be used, another 
color and cotton. This is another mystery one from a grab bag. And then the road is going to be in this mystery grab bag one, also from color and cotton. So a good pebbly gray. So then, let's see. The arrow, I'm trying to think what these are for. Oh, these are for animals. And so I've got Weeks Dye Works Stepping Stone. I believe this is for the stag. Um, I've got Mulberry. I believe this is for the rabbits. And then I've got this one, which is a ship's man or grab bag. I can't remember which animal. This might just be for the other deer. Then we've got for the trees. I couldn't, there's two colors of trees. There's a lot, a medium and a dark green. And so what I did was I pulled two <laughs> because I, I have to be special and have four tree colors. So for the darker colors, this is a color and cotton grab bag. So that's kind of one of my darker ones. And then we've got Weeks Dye Work Lucky. For the two lighter, I am using, and I've used both of these so far. This is Ship's Manor Sea Spray. This is the better. And I, this was actually the one my husband was like, you have to use it. And I was like, do you actually care? And he was like, yes. And I was like, well, then I got to use it. And then this is Ship's Manor Herb Garden. So, as you can see, I had a ton of fun with this. I had I had so much fun, and this is so much, way beyond the amount of floss this project is going to use. So, this is, I am stitching this on an 18 count Ada from Under the Sea Fabrics in Ice Princess. This was one of the mystery stitchers eights that I got. Let me take, this is still on the Q-snap because I'm loving it so much. I think I might find some more time to stitch on it. So here is my, my start. So you can see I stitched these three trees that were, that were all from the lighter color of green from the original chart. These are all in Herb Garden. This tree over here is in Sea Spray and I'm loving how it kind of looks like it's crusty and awesome. This is the Rose Lavender Mosaic and then the roof, the bit that I have done, there's a little bit I still need to fill in. That is in the multi-shaded gray and I'm loving it. And I want it to focus well on that. So anyway, I'm loving this. I love the fabric. I think it like is icy and like it's a winter because this is a Christmas scene. Um, it does have Santa. And so I'm really excited about how this is stitching up. I've got this on my eight by six Q-snap. And it's in a very fancy currently um, gallon project bag. And that is because I have so many projects that I've kitted up that do not have a specific bag for them. And that one's gonna need a rather large one because that's a lot of floss. So what I'm going, I'm kind of getting my head wrapped around making some more project bags. So then I finished that this morning. And so I went ahead and I'm like, all right, truck along, let's start another extra credit. We're already on Friday, we're doing good. So I started, um, and this is for the task of Oh, the Imperious Curse. Something that you saw and you had to have and you had to start it. This is one of my most recent that I've kitted. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. But I've been anxious to start this one, but I had to wait until June. And so it was kind of like I was under the Imperious Curse, but I couldn't, I couldn't succumb yet. And I finally did today. And so this is just a snapshot of it. This is the Bluebirds Sal that he did a bit ago. And I mean, you can just tell this motif right here is like, ugh, gorgeous. So this is stitched in all blues. I'm gonna wait for my color to come back. So these, I'm using all the ship's manners for this. Let's see if I can get my color back before I show this, cause I want it to be true. So it is in my uh, Bluebird pouch. This is some flannel I found at Joann's on clearance. And what's funny is, is this is one of the first ones I ever made. And I did not think to really look at my fabric. And so my birds on the back are upside down. And my daughter has lovingly dubbed them the bat birds. So we've got birds and bat birds. Um, so this is being stitched in all Schitt's Manor. So we have Iceberg. We have, I mean, a turquoise gal over here is loving this. Calypso. We've got Neverland, ugh, Die, Bonnie Blues, so that's the darkest, is the Bonnie Blues, and then Sail Away. Come sail away, come sail away. I have a thing for classic rock. 
I think it's growing up with my dad always listening to it. So I like me some sticks. So I am stitching this on a uh, Mystic Hand Dyed Fabrics. This is a 14 count. And while I, I have stitched a lot of my Ships Manor stuff on 18 count, I could not resist because he kind of has it on this dirty tobacco fabric. And I scored this one and I'm like, it's, it's perfect. So this is my start. It's not much. I just started a little bit ago. But look at this fabric. I'm trying to see if I can get a good shot of it. It's got, I mean, the folds are not helping at all. But it's got pinks, rust, tans. It's perfect. I mean, it, it could not be more perfect. Um, like this patch right here is giving me all the life right there. I love it. So... This one will hopefully be done here um, rather rather expeditiously. But, you know, one thing about his is right in the center, it starts with a lot of, like, fiddly counting. Um, it'll start here with the motif, but then you'll have to go way far over to more of the same color. And so, and with using the overdyes, I'm having to do, I can't do loop start. And so... It takes a little longer to get into some of the larger motifs, but one of the ones that's slotted for this 500 is a spectacular, spectacular birdcage, like four colored birdcage. So I'm really excited about that. So that brings me to what I have stitched on this week. Let's see what's next in my on my agenda to speak with you. Um, I, let's talk plans. I would like to also get some more into HL Moths by Kathy Barrick. And this is for um, the, for It Is Kismet Stitches Stitch Along, that it's Magical Moths out. And so um, I have, I still am at the same spot. This is a Mystic Fabrics in Veteris or Veter. Veteris, and this is a 16 counts Weigert, um, Ada, and this is all, I have a ton of this fabric too. Um, this is as far as I've gotten, so no further than the last time. Um, and then I got kind of crazy, and you will notice that on the front of this, there is this one, and there's this one. This is one that one of her, one of the people that stitched, stitched it over one on 40 count and turned it into a necklace. And I was like, yes, I want a fancy moth necklace. So what did I do? The Ada Stitcher, the Perpetual Ada Stitcher, went and bought 40 count linen. Because I'm insane. No, truly I am because I can't even see this. This is supposed to be like eight stitch. Where even is it? This is supposed to be like eight stitches. I can't even see where one stitch starts and the other. So I am curious, is this a total joke? Am I going to be like so frustrated, like don't even try this, Annie? Or do you have any tips? Or is it possible I picked the wrong linen? Because what I picked was a 40 count, this is picture this plus, 40 count Newcastle in Heartland. It's beautiful. This is a beautiful piece of fabric. This is like double what I need triple what I need. Oh, I don't know. Do I need like a magnifying headset? Do I need, I don't know what I need. Maybe I need a hole in the head. But anyway, I figured I'd show you. I did a conversion on this as well. I am stitching it pretty close to what it kind of shows in the picture. I just used what I had on hand. Um, so I thought I dropped something. I didn't. So I have um, this one, this is, uh, this was a previous Ships Manor thread of the month that I got in a grab bag. This is Weeks Dye Work Chesapeake, which I'm using for the dark parts. This is Weeks Dye Works Rust. I think I might have showed this last week now that I'm thinking. I was, I was medicated for my stomach, so I might. April thread of the month, also a grab bag. Uh, Old Hickory, my Gentle Arts. This is Caramel Glaze, which is a Victorian motto. This is Faded Primrose. This one is gorgeous. 
beautiful perfect for this and then ships manor limited edition and then we've got classic colorworks tufted yellow which is what i'm using for the cream and now that i'm thinking back i think i showed you all those already but i just love them so much so i showed them again so yeah this is again in a beautiful ziploc bag i do have my moth fabric i just have to sit down and make it things call to me call to me so my plans are Bluebird Extra Credit, HL Moth, I'm looking to see what it says, plans. Oh, I need to do the FFO on Strawberries and Stripes, but I had to figure out my magnet situation. It's a long story. I'll show you when I show my finish. Um, oh, I have another start. This is an Extra Credit. This is my last extra credit that's not just watching Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And I am doing this one. This is another one that I plotted out and then I did on graph paper and then I went over Stitch Fiddle and I made it and this is Jeremiah 2911. I know the plans I have for you. And so I need reminders of this on the daily that it's not my plan. I talk an awful lot about plans and in my life I talk an awful lot about plans and I just need to remember that. So before we talk stash and some kitted things, because I do have some kitted things, let's talk about the fact that I have picked back up some knitting. Um, I used to knit, let me take a sip here, I used to knit a ton and then after I don't know what happened, but at some point I developed, and I, it's a funny name, but I think it's Duke Veins, but it's like Carpal Tunnel, but it's in a different spot. It's right here. And knitting aggravated it. Somehow with the way that I held my yarn, held my needles, I wasn't quite sure. It would literally make my thumb go completely to sleep from here to here. And then it would take days for it to wake back up. And that is my dominant hand. And it's only this hand, it's only my right hand that has the problem. And so I gave it up. Sadly, I gave it up. Well, you know, I hate to say this. I, why do I say I hate to say this? I always say that and that's, that doesn't make any sense. I love to say that I have been enabled by my floss tube friends. I call you my friends. My floss tube friends who show these beautiful knitted projects and I'm like, I can do that. I just gotta manage it. I just can't knit for hours and hours on end. For some reason, cross stitching, even though I'm holding a very small needle, does not aggravate that in the same way. So either maybe, I don't know, I do, I will say I knitted a bunch today and it was starting to feel a little like, clenched up tight. So I'm gonna have to watch that. But I have decided, I have, I, have, I have yarn stash. I have needles galore. So there's no reason for me to not pull it back out. I'm ripping a tag off of something that I just realized still had a tag on it. So I got this cute little knitting pouch off of Amazon and it's got like an arm. They show it in the picture like, hey, I'm gonna go carry this on my arm and knit like this, uh, no. But I do like this style of bag. It makes it easy. It actually is very cool and that on this side it has grommets for your yarn to go through. But you kind of have to be forward thinking and not want to change your project because once you've threaded your yarn through you've got your yarn, working yarn here and your project out here. So I probably will not use those. I had considered like putting like a, a fob kind of a thing to hold scissors or things that I want to keep at ease. And it's got a cute little zipper pouch back here. Again, keep things close by. So the the project I am doing, and I actually pulled it up so I could show. Um, I say that, but it's actually in my good notes. Hold, please. Is one that I found on Ravelry, um, and I actually have a Ravelry membership from way back. And this is I what I wanted was a cool like triangular scalene triangle shawl but I wanted it to be easy because there's a lot that I am not as I'm not where I was before I need to relearn it's kind of like when you ride a bike don't go out and ride on a trail go ride in the city streets <laughs> get, get your wheels back under you before you get moving so this is called boom 
and I just think that's so cute and it's by playing with fiber and so this is what her mock-up looks like and she's got it draped but in the pictures on Ravelry there's lots of different ways that they show so I went to my stash and I don't know that this is going to be enough, but I wanted to use these. And I found, um, I used to have a knit crate sub. And I used to do the minis, where you got 10 skeins of minis through a theme. And this was my favorite theme that they had done. And it was from like January 2018, I think. And it was the Something Cozy collection. Let me see if I can get that to focus. Focus on that, not on the other things. There you go. And so... It's got two skeins of this golden yellow, two skeins of this aqua blue, two skeins of this pink and purple oops, variegated. Two, oh, this one is so pretty two shades of purple, green, turquoise, and then a gray, two skeins of gray. This really pretty, just light gray. And so I have a minimal start. This is what a ball looks like. They're so cute. Um, and I do not have a Swift. I do not have a ball winder. And I didn't want to truck over to my yarn shop to do that. So I just put it around a pillow and wound it up. And so this is my tiny little start and I am stitching this on Addy Turbo these are us these are us US 6 with cables I like stitching with it with the weight sitting in my lap as opposed to on my arms and so that's just a brief little start of some knitting and I'm excited to see how that continues on. It's a pretty simple pattern. You basically need to know just a basic increase of a knit front back and um, a decrease of a knit two together. And that's it. And just keeping track of which is your right and your wrong side. And so I've got it in my cute little tote. Very excited about that. That will be fun to take with me on vacation. We are going on vacation in the middle of July and we are going to Montana for 10 days and it's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be about a hundred and some odd here and not that there. Um, those of you who don't know, Texas gets very hot in the summer. We've had actually unseasonably mild weather. We've been in kind of the 80s still or the upper 80s. Today we got over 90 and it's starting to feel the burn. So I'm, I'm I'm okay. I'm okay so far. I'm actually doing really well with the heat this year. Uh, I have in the past had issue with um, getting overheated too easily. So this year's been good. All right, so that's plans, plans. Bluebird, Jeremiah 2911 start if possible. FFO strawberries and stripes that may be first of the week because um, I'm waiting on some trim to come in the mail. Knitting on boom in between and the new homework comes out on Monday and we're kind of trucking along here in June. All right, so talked about knitting. Let's go to some stash and we're going to pause. We're going to do a new clip for that. So let's get a stock. All right, we're back and we're going to chat. I decided, I think I said I was going to do stash and so we're going to do stash. Then we're going to talk a little bit of some kitted projects and share those and then books because we went to the library and got some new books. So, first thing that came was some fabric from Mystic Fabrics LLC. This was one she did last Sunday's release. So I got this dark blue, it's an opalescent. And this is a 18 count opal in this pretty blue that she called these her gems. Colorway, it is still in the plastic, but you should still be able to see how gorgeous that is. Very talented. And then she had some reposts so if something doesn't sell in her weekly, she'll usually pull it while she's kind of figuring everything out. And then she'll repost them the next week and there's no limit on those. And so I have been dying to try a 22 count. I've tried 20. I've been dying to try a 22 and I think that's called Hardinger. I might be wrong in how I'm pronouncing that. But this one is um, a 22 count that was a leftover from a previous I think this was the fabric of the month because I think I already have this this look in um, a different count I think 
And so this is a really pretty, it's like sherbet to me. Pinks and oranges and beautiful. So it's a good 18 by 21 inch piece. I found a lot of my projects I can get on more. Okay, so let's do a little stash unload. So one that showed up, and I'm actually really excited about this, is I love monograms. I'm from the South. We do monograms. And so this is a Dover book, and somebody was selling this for like 3 or $4. And it's charted monograms for needlepoint and cross stitch. And so just to give you an idea, I'm, I don't think I'll be giving anything away. It's got, it starts with A's, and it has like A, 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 A through A, Z. And then B would have B, starts with BB because they, I think you can like flip flop. And so obviously you can go through and then in here there's also um, crown motifs. Some of them are way fancier than others. So I'm excited about this. Um, my mom loves monograms and so I'm going to probably do hers and hers is really pretty. Let me see if I can find hers real quick. Hers is one of my more favorite ones. Actually, I lied. My daughter's is one of my favorite, one of my most favorite ones. So here is, so CC. And then what's funny is my daughter is VV. Um, so I'm looking to see if I can find, because I think hers is really cool too. But hers is way back here in the back. And by the time you get to Z, you've only got just a few left because it's where it didn't repeat. Oh, yes. This was her. This is hers. So, VV. I think that's so cool. And I even really like my own. I'm AV. Um, so, I'm going to have fun with this. Do some cute uh, monograms on stuff. I don't know what on what. Oh, yeah. AV. Love it. So, this was a cool stash unload find. I'm excited about that. I also just got this today. I ordered it a couple weeks ago, but she b fell ill. This is a shepherd's bush. I think she sold this for a dollar, and it's Joy. Cutesy little, like, nativity. Like, it's the Be it's Bethlehem, and then the angel over it. I think I'm going to stitch this for my mom for Christmas as a small. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I got this from Stash and Load. Lila Studio Halloween Quaker. You are probably familiar with this, but I'm excited about it. I'm loving everything Quaker. Oh, spoiler alert. Unicorn patterns are on their way from some different places. I'm so excited. So, let me show you what I got from 123 Stitch. So, I that when I ordered my 40 count, I ordered it from 123 Stitch. No fabric travels alone, no pattern travels alone. And so, I had seen who shared this. Garrett, Coffee Stitcher, shared this. Count your blessings. Annie B's Folk Art. I believe it was him that shared this. And I thought this was adorable. I love the symmetry in it. And so this is on my short list of things to start. I mean, look at how cute the bunny, bunny farmer and lady and the bluebirds. So cute. So cute. That, that came home to me. And then I also, they ha were having a deal on some of their picture, picture this plus. So I got um, a 12 by 17 piece of 16 count in Sprite. So I like that. It was kind of just a real, real simple looking lavender. I don't know what this is going to be. This is going to be probably Halloween type stitching. Um, and this is a 16 count in Gothic. Pretty. That or like some kind of outer space pattern. Something cool like Galaxy. So I got those two. They were on a, a real good price. And again, you know, I'm ordering one fabric. Don't send, it, send one lonely fabric to me. Send more fabrics. And the chart. Because I saw it and it was on sale. And I was like, yes please. Thank you. Jump in my cart. Um, So let's chat about Victorian Motto. And then I'm going to show you some kitted, which also includes a little bit of a um, stash acquisition. So I get six of Nancy's uh, flosses. Well, no, excuse me. I get 12. I get six of the prim, primitive, and six of the limited editions. Um, and I think she has one other option, which is, I don't know what. I don't get it. I don't know. 
But I am starting to feel a little like, ooh, I'm missing out because I only get six of the 12 that she produces. So I'm like trying to decide, am I going to give up something else to be able to get, I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence about that. So this is the limited editions for, this is uh, June's. So we've got 1945 mint, pretty. And most of these do not have, oh, this one does have a DMC conversion, 3817. Magenta Pink Floral, gorgeous. Mont Creme, very French. Peach Brandy, which kind of reminds me a little bit of that Antique Pumpkin Glow. Um, faded Scarlet, so actually a really pretty coral, like a corally red. It's really kind of blowing it out on my camera. It's not quite that sharp and then shaded linen, which is a really pretty cream. And so let me show you those together because I think they they complement each other well. So this is the limited editions, beautiful. And I love that Nancy ships them in these long skinny bags. It makes them so fancy. Not that they stay this way for long because they usually get, you know, put away in some way, shape or form. Okay, so then the prim, primitive, excuse me, limited editions again. So we've got dried star grass, pretty. Real pale yellowy. Um this one's awesome too. Almost orange. Old navy. I love that one. It's showing up a little more purple in my viewfinder than I think it really is. Orange ice. So similar, but lighter than the almost orange. Ripe seed pod, good neutral. And then um, Southern Trillium, which is really pretty. So let me show you those together. So this is a good month. Um, but I've seen some that others got and I was like, oh, I'm having FOMO. You're missing out. So there's this month's primitive. Beautiful. Wonderful job. I know Nancy does not watch me. Well, I don't know that Nancy doesn't watch me, but I feel certain Nancy is too busy dyeing all the things and making all the beautiful things to have time to watch little me. But if she did, I would say bravo, bravo. Round of applause for you. All right, so let's talk about kidding. So the verdict is in on... Christmas Quaker 2 Songs of the Season. I had asked in my previous video what everybody thought I should do because I had the option of uh, doing the hydra Hydrangea Blossom with Garden Peas or with Glorious Pinks. And so it actually was in kidding a different project and realizing Glorious Pinks would be beautiful for that. I'm going to share it in just a minute that I was like, garden peas. That was that was my sign. So I am going to be stitching this on Mystic, let me see a theme, Mystic Fabrics 18 count, and this is in her colorway Snurt. And so it's uh, a pretty, and this piece is huge, and this is not all I had. I think I had double this. But it's got even some green grays in there and blue grays in there. So this is a beautiful piece. I'm excited about it. And now let me keep this out. So you can see the beautiful flosses that are going to be the majority that are going to be this. So it is going to be all the motifs are going to be in hydrangea blossoms by Victorian Motto, which is gorgeous. And then the words will be in garden peas also by Victorian Motto. So there is that project ready to go. I'm feeling a bit intimidated by the sheer size of it. I'm feeling a bit intimidated by the amount of back stitching. So as much as I'm like really excited to start this one, I'm also really like filled with trepidation. That's my vocabulary word for the day. All right, so I was really excited. I turned on post notifications finally because I finally got smart. Let me take a drink of this. I finally got smart and realized 
the only way I was going to score a bit of the awesomeness that Bendy Stitchy, Michelle over at Bendy Stitchy, posted on her D stash. The only way I was going to ever do that is if I had post notifications on and I happened to be by my phone at the time. If you did not know, she D stashes amazing selection of things that are donated to her and she donates the proceeds I believe from those to charity, a charity of the month. So I, one, I love supporting that and two, she has great stuff. But I, I'm going to tell you, when you say me please, you might think you have the first comment and then it, and then it like updates and you're like 87th. And I was like, hmm. So I finally though was lucky enough to score my very first long dog sampler. And I'm so excited. And this is Sacre Coeur. So lots of really pretty heart motifs. Very French vibe, obviously. Sacre Coeur is one of the cathedrals in France, in Paris. In the Montmartre area. And I have been there. And I've been up into the turret area. And it's beautiful. And so I decided to go ahead and kit this up. And what, how this kind of came about is I dyed a piece of fabric in thinking I was going to use it for Christmas Quaker 2. But then when I dyed it, it's beautiful. I'm excited about it, but it did not fit that project. It did not fit in the way that I wanted it to. So this I used, this is a piece of 18 count Ada. And I used navy and aquamarine. To do this big piece. And I mean it's a big piece. It's actually probably a little too big for soccer care. So I'm trying to see if it'll focus in. And it's a little, you can see it's got some cool crease, creasing looks. So I am doing this and it's got my surging threads. I didn't cut them off. Um, lazy. So I'm going to do in no particular fashion right now, and I'm waiting on some of these to come because I need something like 60 yards of floss total. Um, I am doing this in Victoria Motto, Glorious Pinks, and Victoria Motto Antique Rose Petals. And both of these are ones I found in her eBay shop. So they are not limited editions. They Well, they might be, but she has them currently available. I ordered, I believe, two more of this one, of the antique rose petals. Oops. And so it's going to be on this blue with the pretty pinks, and I'm really excited about it. And so it'll just kind of be as I get to a motif, I'll decide what I want to be the dominant color and what I want to be the um, complementary color. And so I'm excited about that. Um, I think it's going to be really pretty. Um, and I'm really excited about my first long dog sampler. Again, feeling a little bit of trepidation with the size of this one too, although it is not near as large. This one I think is only four pages and they're not even all full pages. Um, Christmas Quaker is like 12 and I think only four of them are partial pages. That I think is like my largest project. Okay, so I then kitted up two others because you know I was in kind of a kidding way this week. And I have all these beautiful flosses hanging around and I'm like, I'm cleaning some space here. And I wanna put them in projects and I wanna get thinking about what I'm gonna use them for. So I decided to pull out two of my Lizzie Kates that were in my stash. And um, one I am staying more true to what it looks like um, in the mock-up. I'm changing a couple of things. So let me pull that up to show you. I'm looking at my time to make sure I'm not going to get cut off in the middle here while I wait on my Google Drive to come up. Um, so I have a deep history with Lizzie K. <laughs> like, a, like a personal history. No. I have my first cross stitch ever 20 plus years ago was a Lizzie Kate. Um, most of the Christmas pillows I did for my mom were Lizzie Kate's. And so I love Lizzie Kate's. And I think that what's great about her designs is you can s change them up. They have their called for colors, but you can go with it. You can run with it. You can make them as wild. I will tell you, I've been watching, I've been going back and filling in the gaps, so to speak, with respect to watching my floss tubes. And so I've been watching some of uh, Sammy J stitches. She's a fellow Texan. Um, 
and seeing her, I think it's our house, on that bright fabric with all the bright flosses. Uh, I love it, and I love that she took her own spin on it, and so that's great. So the first one I'm going to show you is ABC Faith, and um, this is one that I recently, I saw at my LNS, and I was like, oh, they don't have it, and I knew Lizzie Cates at that point. This was earlier, like around about January, and I knew that Lizzie Cates had kind of gone retired, you know, it was going to be done, and that was before they uh, partnered with 123Stitch, or so I thought. I didn't know the whole story. Yeah, I don't think I knew the whole story. My mom got on, bought me the, um, bought me the chart, and I can't get it to pull up. Um, my Google Drive keeps crashing, so I may have to pull it up on my other device if this crashes again. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, iPad. You're awesome. Said no one ever. And here I am a rambling among the leaves of rain. Oh, that's the thing I've been watching like on repeat. On repeat. Raise your hand if you like Little Women. Found it on Netflix. Watched it like on repeat. Love it. Okay, so this is ABC's of Faith. It's hard to see. So anyway, I didn't want to show the chart, but it showed it anyway. Um, so we walk by faith, not by sight. And it has a, a is for ask and it will be given, believe. And so I'm stitching this up to hang it in my classroom. Um, I am a teacher at a Christian school and I love things of Christian nature on my walls. So it um, shows it on a... Fabric's very similar to this one. This is, I don't know what this is. Did I write it down? Of course I didn't. Um, this might be, this might be a Mystic fabric. Oh, no, I'll tell you what this is. I did get it from Mystic. I got it, it's a bitty bag. This is an 18 count in vintage country mocha. And it's like the perfect size. I don't have to do anything to it and so, that's what it was. All right, so when she ordered it, she ordered it with the DMCs. Just the DMCs. So there's like six DMC colors, and it's like only what you need is given. And there, I'm, excuse me, I a while back had bobbinated it, and so it's got white, 3687, uh, 3779, a green, 3140, 937 is the green and then kind of a gold and then I needed to fill in where the over dyes were um and so I kind of pulled some colors that I liked that went along with what they had charted um so I've got this limited edition ship's manor that I got in a grab bag I've got prim stitcher by Victoria Motto this is one that was part of the prim It might have been the Prim Stitcher set. Um, and then I've got this one. This was part of the April limited edition Prim Early Greens. I've got that pretty color. And then I've got Old Pink Lace, which is also a Victoria motto. And this is, uh, so the DMC conversion on this is 224 slash 152 slash 761. So all really pretty pinks. And so that is kind of the pink I'm going to use. And then for the letters, it has it with, it was something dark and I didn't like how it looked. And so I ended up pulling, um, this is a color and cotton chestnut and it's kind of a pinky brown and I, and it's got even some kind of purpley in it. And I only have one skein. And I don't know how much it's going to take. It does not give you stitch amounts. And so I contacted Color and Cotton and I said, hey, by the way, I love this. I need more. Do you, are you going to have it on your site? And if so, when? Or is it a limited and you're not going to? Because I got this one in a sub. And they said, we're behind. No big deal. We do have three from the original dialogue 
how many would you like? And I said, all three, please. Invoiced me earlier this week for those three. They'll be here like early in the week or something. They shipped them like that same day. I mean, that is customer service, folks. When you can contact a company and be like, hey, I need more of this. Is there any way you, you know, have any more? And it basically it was me saying, is it going to be on the website? I'll wait. No big deal. And they were like, no, we have some available. I was like, okay. So before I get to my last kidding, I'm going to take a minute to stop this clip and start a new one. So this is going to be a long one. I don't know what each of my clips are, but I do know that I've had a couple of blinking time stamps. So the last one that I have to show you is another Lizzie Kate. This is also going to be going to school and it is called My To-Do List. And I probably should have pulled this up while I would pause the video, but I'll learn. I'll get better, I promise. So this is another one that I, I think I got this one off of somebody. I'm not sure where I got this. I think I saw somebody had stitched it and I loved what it said and I was like, okay, I need to find that. And I might have just gotten it off one, two, three, one, two, three stitch. I don't really remember. And if my iPad crashes on me again, I'm gonna be very, very sad. Let's see if it'll actually open this one. Yay, maybe, okay, good. So it says my to-do list for today Count your blessings, practice kindness, let go of what you, I can't control, listen to my heart, be productive yet calm, and just breathe. So I love this. I love the sentiments behind it, but what I did not like is how muted it is. I needed to jazz it up a little bit. I needed to make it more me. So I started by pulling a color in cotton. This was a um, sub. This was a monthly piece. I think it's Sea Breeze, and I believe it's an 18 count Ada in Sea Breeze. So that's my fabric of choice. And then what I did again, this was similar to what I had done with the Prairie Schooler Tree Farm, is I sat and I pulled, okay, what are the symbols and what's each symbol used for? And one thing I noted is that the words were alternating words or alternating sentences in a dark, dark brown, and a like tan. So that was the first thing I had to change up. And then I looked and saw, okay, well, what are the motifs? What are they in? Um, I found it interesting that the motifs were more of the overdyed, but they're very small quantities. So what I did was I went ahead and was like, all right, what do I, I want to go with this? So we went with brights. So my border that's on there, I was get I was gifted this as a freebie when I ordered some fabric from Barbara All Creations on Etsy. And this is her rainbow floss. So my border that goes from the my to-do list for today is going to be in this. So this really guided my color selection. So then I knew that there's some motifs that are like hearts and flowers. So I pulled these two colors. I pulled, this is um, Gentle Arts Poinsettia or Poinsettia, but it's not red. It's more of a pinky. And then this is a Classic Colorworks in Ripe Melon. So I pulled those two to use for that. These will also be one of the one of the lines. Each of these colors will also be the line. Then I've got Victoria Motto New Marmalade which is like coming a little more yellow than it really is. It's more of an orangey yellow. Another one of these Ships Manor limited edition yellows, golden yellow. I had a lot of those. Uh, Victoria Motto Lime Squeeze. This is one I showed in a previous video as stash um, that I had gotten when I was trying to decide on greens for Christmas Quaker. This is a color and cotton uh, mystery from a grab bag. This is a really pretty turquoisey blue, pool blue. Then we've got Victoria Motto Kansas Sky, which is a blue-gray. Then we've got um, Delphinium Blue from Victoria Motto. This is a hand dyed by Rolanda in this really pretty orchidy purple. And then the white is gonna be um, Gentle Arts Picket Fence. Let me get that to focus. The gray is going to be in Weeks Dye Work Seagull. And then I've got uh, just a little bit of black is going to be in Gentle Arts Raven. 
And so really everything that's words is going to be colors. The raven is really only for the bees, I think. So it's kind of, you know, just one little bit. This is also just for like there's an urn. And that might be it for that. And then um, like the, the blue, this blue is going to be the bird. There's a little cute little bird, a blue bird. And then a little kind of Quaker motif that will be in that. And then there's the flowers are in red. And then there's another, there's some little quilt squares that are also being the pink and the red. So like that brings me joy. That brings me joy. And then you put that. I know it's all in plastic. Ah, oh, love it. So I'm excited to get this one going. I think this and ABC Faith are going to be two that go with me to Montana in a month or two. I don't know that these will get started before June is over. Um, like I said, I've got to get headway on some of my other projects. So, as if this wasn't long enough, let's talk books. I finished Thunder Girls, the second one. I did go ahead and finish that, um, which was mm, Sith and the... Now I can't even remember. But really good. It got really good towards the middle, and I finished that. And so, went to the public library, and... Uh, getting books for my daughter and I found some for myself to read. Um, so I got this one. This is from the, so it's a new series as from the same world as the fairy tale reform school. And so this is the first book in the Royal Academy Rebels. It's called Misfits. It is by Jen Caloniti. And it says, from the desk of the fairy godmother, headmistress Olavinia would cordially like to welcome Devinaria Nile of Cobblestone Creek Enchant Enchantasia to Royal Academy for her first year of princess training. Please arrive with these items. You will also need no less than three ball gowns, two petticoats, three pairs of dress shoes. Please note, glass slippers should have scuffed soles to prevent injuries due to high wax floors. Personal stylists and tailors will be on site to assist all students in curating their signature royal style. So, not everyone born royal is meant to rule. So, this one looks cute. I'm excited to read that one. All right, this one is one I'm probably going to read to my daughter. It's um, Nuts. Nuts to you. And it says, in which four squirrels find out what they're made of. Friendship, courage, big ideas, also nuts. And I mean that in a good way. And this is by Lynn Ray Perkins. And she was the winner of the Newbery Medal for Criss Cross. And so on the inside it says, the silhouette of a lone squirrel stood sharp against the pearly morning sky. No, wait. How about this? Two squirrels trudged wearily along. They were already far from home. They were headed even farther. Darkness settled around them and made it hard to move. Still, they kept on. That is so gloomy. Does it have to be so gloomy? Okay, how about danger, said the squirrel. Ha, I laugh at danger. You didn't make that up. Someone else made that up. Okay, you start it then. What's the story? It depends on who you ask. So I thought that looked really cute. So I'm going to read this uh, with my daughter. Then I got, okay, so I've been obviously really into the Thunder Girls books, which are, are Norse, Norse, not North, Norse mytho mythology. So there is a series by Rick Reardon. Um, he wrote the Percy Jackson series. He also wrote the Heroes of Olympus series. Well, he's also written the Magnus Chase series and the Gods of Asgard. So this, though, is a book called... Um, Nine from the Nine Worlds. So it specifically says short stories featuring characters from the New York Times number one best-selling series by Rick Reardon. So obviously the series is on my radar now. But this looks really good. Um, they didn't have the first book in this series. And I'm not starting in the middle. So it says, how well do you really know the Nine Norse realms? So this is by a Disney. I did not know that. Disney Hyperion. So it's got some cool graphics in the front. So, excited about that. Two more. Um, this one I thought was funny because the book I read was called uh, Freya and the Magic Jewel, which is the first Thunder Girl. Um, and it says Freya, 
found her companion's lack of advance planning unimpressive. But before she could say another word, the balloon gave a tremendous lurch. Then it began to plummet. Uneasy, she braced herself. Against the woven walls with outstretched wings, this is not the smooth sailing one might hope for, she said. It never is, said Zeus placidly. So I like that it's Freya and Zeus. It has nothing to do with mythology. I just like that it was Freya. So anyway, that's another one to add to my to my to be red pile. And the last one is one that uh, some of the other teachers are reading um, over the summer. We don't really have like required reading as teachers. But um, this is the newest book called Go See the Principal. And it is by uh, Gary, Jerry, Gary, Jerry Brooks. And he's the one that does the fun. He's the principal that does the funny um, videos on Facebook. Seriously seriously and so this is true tales from the school trenches so i'm excited just this is a fun one to read um and it's got you know it's broken up into little sections and things so i'm excited about this one too i got that one from amazon today um so yeah we have talked q a whips plans knitting stash kitted things and books so if you still made it to this point Thank you so much. Like, truly, that means so much if you have made it to this point in my video. If you stopped watching long ago, you aren't even going to hear me say this, but I really do appreciate any length of time that you spend listening to me ramble on about my life, my stitching, my crafting, and all that awesome stuff that goes along with. I really do hope you are going to have a great weekend ahead. I know that we have maybe a little something planned for Father's Day. I have to talk with my daughter tomorrow. Um... I think my husband is actually off work tomorrow, which is great. Um, he works a lot of times on Saturdays. And so we're just going to enjoy the weekend and get get ready for our, the next week ahead. My daughter's in camp next week, Lego camp. So that will be fun for her. And um, I've got some work to do. And then hopefully I'm moving into my new classroom. Fingers crossed that that gets done here pretty quick. So that's all from me for, for today. So I hope you have a great weekend, a great week ahead, looking ahead to Monday. And, you know, get some stitching in. Get some you time. Get some, get some, personal, some personal time. Happy stitching and many blessings for a fantastic, fantastic rest of this weekend. Bye.